Welcome to our lecture online. Now here we have an example that is a little bit more complicated. Let's take a look at it and see if we can solve it. And notice we're now going to be able to solve this whole thing on one single board. We may have to do two or three videos to get to the final answer. But the whole approach is the same as before. We are going to draw some circuits for the time before the event happens, for the time right after the event happens, and for the time as it approaches infinity and we reach steady state. So what's the event we're looking at here? Here is a current source that turns on as a step function when t equals zero. So after t equals zero, this becomes a three amp, and I forgot the amp symbol here. How about a three amp as a step function starting at time equals zero? Now the rest of the circuit, we have a couple of resistors, we have a capacitor, we have an inductor, and we have a voltage source right in here in that branch. Notice we're going to want to know the current in the circuit, we're going to want the voltage across this resistor, we're going to want the voltage across the capacitor, and so forth. But at least there's our starting circuit. So what we're first going to do is we're going to draw the very same circuit before time equals zero, which means there's no current source, so we consider that to be an open. We don't, the capacitors will become open as well, so this capacitor is replaced by an open, and the inductor will have a uh, what we call be replaced by a closed circuit or a short circuit. We can then say that the current in the circuit is going to be equal to zero because the voltage source is on a open branch, so there's no current flowing anywhere in the circuit, so the current is equal to zero. The voltage across the resistor, therefore, must be equal to zero as well. But the voltage across the capacitor is not zero because notice on this end of the capacitor, we are at the lowest end of the voltage supply. At this end, we're at the top end. And since I have the voltage across the capacitor is plus minus here, and this is at plus 20 volts, it's actually in reverse. So the voltage across the capacitor, the way we have listed it here, is going to be equal to a minus 20 volts. Now we allow the event to happen time equals zero. So at that point, we're going to draw the circuit again at time equals zero plus, right after the event happened. We can say that the current in the circuit through the inductor and through the resistor will be the same after the vent as it will be before the vent. Notice that in this branch, we probably have a three amp current because that's what it says. And then we can see that we have a voltage across the capacitor. Well, that's going to be the same right after the vent as it is right before the vent. So it's going to be minus 20 volts as well. However, what we cannot say is the following. We're not going to know what the voltage is across the resistor because now all of a sudden we have a three amp source here that wasn't there before. We don't know what the current will be across the capacitor. We don't know what the change of the current will be across the inductor. We don't know what the voltage will be, the change of the voltage across the capacitor. We don't know what the voltage change is going to be across the resistor, and we don't know what the voltage change is going to be between these two nodes, node 1 and node 2. So notice in this particular case, there's a lot of unknowns that we're going to try to solve, and we're going to need Kirchhoff's rules, the current rule, and the voltage rule in order to be able to do so. So you can see that it's not as simple as thinking, I know immediately what's going to happen right after in that final steady state. There's going to be quite a few equations we're going to need to solve in order to solve this particular uh, circuit. But again, the startup is exactly the same as before. We have our original circuit. We first draw the circuit at time right before the event happens, and we draw the circuit again right after the event. So right before the event and right after the event. And yes, we can see that the circuit looks like this right before the vent. We don't have any current through this branch. We don't have an inductor. We don't have a capacitor. The inductor is simply a short circuit. The, the capacitor is an open circuit. And now right after, now we place in our capacitor. We place our inductor in there. We still have our voltage source. And we now have an instantaneous current source that starts at 3 amp right when time starts at t equals zero. So we can make only a few assumptions. We can say that the current through the inductor is still the same as it was before the event happened, zero amps, and the voltage across the capacitor is the same from before the event happened. It's still going to be minus 20 volts, but all these other things we're going to have to very carefully calculate, and we'll show you how to do that in the next video. So stay tuned, and the rest of the problem will be solved for you there.